Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about wireless network design within the campus. We've split this up into multiple parts. This is part one. Early adopters of Wi-Fi technology were vertical markets like education, logistics, and they may use mobility or barcoding or other such applications. Today, Wi-Fi is being used everywhere. We have vertical, horizontal markets focusing on mobility, different standards, different throughput requirements, maybe bringing in intrusion detection services, location-based services, and lots of voice calls running over the wireless LAN. The enterprise office may use any of these applications on the Wi-Fi. They may use it for voice over wireless LAN. They demand security. They may even use it for video camera security. They may need it to be location aware, or they just simply may want the customers or the users to do emails and calendaring. There may be access to enterprise databases, supply chain management, Salesforce automation, or even customer relationship management. So the design is to focus on what it is the customer wants to do with their Wi-Fi network. And an enterprise office network will be different to a hospital network, will be different to an education in a K-12 school, will be different to education in a university school. So you have to set the performance requirements and understand what are the performance requirements for the networks. Are we going to be using smartphones? Are we going to be using internet tablets? The frontier between professional devices and personal devices is fading very quickly. Some companies use the BYOD concept where either they allow the users to use their corporate devices for personal use or they allow the personal devices for corporate use. Latency may not always be the main issue that we have today in the enterprise office environment. Offices can be radically different. You may be configuring an office on a ground floor level on a single story building, or you may be configuring Wi-Fi in a beautiful office in downtown Manhattan that's 37 floors up. So you need to pay attention to atriums, auditoriums, Multi-floor becomes a big issue. Here in California, it's very rare, unless you go into the, the big cities, that anything is higher than one floor high. Uh, only hospitals and hotels tend to be multi-story in California. You go to downtown Manhattan, and every single building is multi-stories. You go to the big cities, like New York, Manhattan, and you go to the Middle East, where they pride themselves of having massive multi-multi-floor buildings. Well, it looks fantastic. It's great architect. Excuse me. It looks fantastic. It's great architecture. But we have to make Wi-Fi work on all these multiple floors. It actually it's easier if you have smaller offices with limited neighbors. The small office, the remote office, is a very quickly emerging market. This can be anything from a restaurant or a pub to a, an accountancy office where they have one or maybe two APs. New solutions are being developed constantly for these markets, and Wi-Fi becomes very, very cost effective. You can change around very quickly. My own personal accountant, for example, hires two or three extra people at the end of every tax year. They've got to fit in somewhere. Where do their devices connect into the network? By using Wi-Fi, he's made things much, much, much more simpler and much, much easier. Security can be made simple because you can use a local radio server in an autonomous AP or in the wireless LAN controller itself. You can have controller-based radius functionality. You can also use Flex Connect and Cisco Office Extend to extend the office to the home office or to the smaller office at your sites. Education is a huge user of Wi-Fi. They like to give out devices to the students, maybe tablets or Chrome devices, and they want them to connect where the students are. They don't want to have to worry about running cables and such things. So education is a huge user of Wi-Fi. Sometimes you may have to protect the Wi-Fi system from the users themselves. Children are very curious, can be very destructive. I wonder what this button does. Uh, what happens if I push on this antenna? And you shouldn't really let the children anywhere near the antennas for safety reasons. 
Retail has been a long time user of Wi-Fi technology. It may use Wi-Fi for real-time application. Uh, there's a local restaurant that I go to quite frequently. They don't have a standard till as you would expect it. They have an iPad connected into a cash box, and that's it, with a keyboard connected. That is their till that they use to take payments and take cash and give change and things. Retail may use wireless technology for special events. They may use wireless LANs for voice and paging functionality. Qu quite often today, you'll find a hotspot in a retail store. We have a local Safeway, for example, that has a Starbucks that has a hotspot. The idea is they want people to come in and order a Starbucks and maybe use their wireless devices. While they're there, hey, let's do some shopping. So it's used to attract people into the store and retain their business. You may have uneven use of Wi-Fi during retail open hours and off hours when they do stock taking, for example. And there are different wireless applications that could be used at different hours of the day in retail. You may find a very heavy wireless LAN usage during inventory hours. A retail will tend to use some kind of barcode scanners. Barcode scanners are a simple telnet type of application. Very, very simple, low bandwidth consumption. But you may get lots and lots of them. You may find that the retail store has evolved to using tablets. So they can use tablets for order processing or interaction. This may be a web type of bandwidth. And the user experience can be influenced by the loading speed. Excuse me. The user experience can be influenced by the loading speed of the page. You may find that they do inventory only at night, or they may do it during the day, or they may do 24-hour inventory. This can reduce the number of users and spread the load, but it must take into account this loading will be added to the other wireless users that may be trying to use the system. If inventory is done at night, you may find a large number of users march out, and a large number of packets are used to do overnight inventory. Uh, you may find in retail, multiple workers may send large amount of information. You may have a particular part of the retail store, for example, here, when they receive materials and products into the store, in the warehouse. There may be a large requirement or a large number of barcode scanners or tablets being used for inventory arrival at the stores. You may find the older devices that slow down the network. They may actually be added to the LMB devices. There's been no need to upgrade them for 10 years because they work fine. So the store owners and operators may be unexcited about having to upgrade to 802 to LMNAC expensive new tablets, for example. You need to find out, do they support the new functionalities and when and how the data collection devices operate on the wireless LAN. You need to make sure you understand fully their applications and their operation. Do they do different rates? You may find that they're old, old B devices that just do one or two megabits. You may also need to investigate the coverage range that's needed on these devices and how battery life affects the operation of these devices. Uh, you may have sources of, of interference in retail. For example, if you go down to a local computer store, you may find that they quite often they, are, they may have um, they may say other electronics as well. They may have baby monitors, game consoles operating. They may have surround sound systems being demonstrated. All of this may interfere with the Wi-Fi network. You may also have other stores, other neighboring stores that use their own wireless LANs or are doing these kind of things that may interrupt your Wi-Fi functionality. Also, be aware of a large number of Bluetooth devices. That can impact the 2.4 gigahertz as well. Hotels tend to be a multi-floor construction, usually made of poured concrete. You may have one AP per room, or you may have one AP in multiple rooms. The standard mode of operation with hotels is to throw APs up in the corridor. It looks like it's convenient, but it can be very restrictive and can cause problems in its own right. What sort of throughput do you want to offer? The hotel that I'm staying in at the moment, for example, has basic operation that's limited to functionality, but you can pay for enhanced operation of Wi-Fi. 
at various reasonable rates for one hour, one day, one month, and so on. You may find in a hotel the number of users per AP during the weekday, during the business week, you may find fewer users per AP. But on weekends, when families may come to stay at the hotel, you may find the number of users double or triple. You may also find that hotels are made of different types of building material. Do not assume that all hotels are equal based on where they are and how and when they were built. Considerations for hotel security. You not only have to keep bad people, the hackers, out, you've also got to keep the operators and the users of the Wi-Fi network safe from each other, physically and at the network level of enhanced security. Some hotels want to be able to bill the users for their operation. Some hotels, the more expensive the hotel, the more boutique the hotel, the less likely they want to have access points visible on the ceilings or in the rooms. You may also find that older hotels of hard cap ceiling poured concrete walls that radically affect the operation and the mountain of the access points. Newer hotels are more likely to have drop tile ceilings that you could run cables and such. Uh, further considerations for hotels, you may have interference with the hotel infrastructure wireless while providing the infrastructure for the users wireless. Cleaning services, maintenance, security may all have systems that interfere with the user's Wi-Fi. You may also have possible multiple providers in separate locations of a hotel. I went to a hotel in Nashville recently. It was more of a campus than a hotel. They had room Wi-Fi coverage. They had convention center and retail area coverage all in this one massive hotel. It, it, it was more like a small city than it was a, a standard hotel. You may also find that hotel conference centers may have sporadic usage. One day you may have 10 people in the center, depending on the size. The next day you may have 300 people. So you can find usage can be quite sporadic. They may find it becomes high density very quickly for important conferences. And then you may find you have different security requirements for different types of conferences. All this needs to be taken into account to make your Wi-Fi network adaptable. Hospitality requirements generally fall in three different categories. Best coverage, Wi-Fi just needs to work, or we want to be able to monetize everything, including the operation and the use of the Wi-Fi. You may also have some hotels that want to offer a tiered service, as I mentioned, free basic Wi-Fi with silver or platinum service with different levels of data caps or speed caps on them. Hotspots, uh, your standard coffee shop, for example. You might have just one AP in operation. You may not need to do a survey because you may only be covering a, a coffee shop of a, a fixed area. You've got to take into account, though, is it going to be subscriber? Is it going to be chargeable? Are you going to plug into a generic network on the back end? So hotspots can be public areas. It can be in coffee shops. They can be in restaurants, hotels, airports, convention centers. Today, there's a huge demand for marinas and caravan parks to have hotspots and Wi-Fi, campgrounds and RV parks, for example. Also, national parks. Uh, you probably want to go to the national park to look at the pretty flowers and the pretty animals, and you probably shouldn't be on your cell phone at the same time. But in certain areas, the parks do want coverage for the clients, maybe to upload their pictures or upload their Facebook post Hey, I'm at the National Park. Come on down. It's free advertising quite often. Airports, they may need, may need multidimensional coverage, typically open areas, long open pathways, also high traffic areas. If you leave equipment during the site survey unattended, it may be stolen. You also have security restrictions and rules and reg regulations of using devices at an airport. You don't want to cause some kind of security scare, so you need to be very, very careful of that. Healthcare, watch out for the 2D trap. Quite often, hospitals are multi-story, three-dimensional. You may get lots and lots of APs in numerous rooms. You need to make use of non-overlapping channels. 
You may have special trauma or x-ray rooms that may be lead-lined, which may require their own dedicated AP inside those rooms. Elevators can block the transmission of Wi-Fi signals, and you tend to have lots of elevators in a hospital. Some areas may not be accessible to the surveyor easily, but may need wireless coverage. Very important when you're doing a survey in healthcare, you may want to add some extra time because you may want to do a survey in a room that's being used. and You've got to wait. You've got no choice. You've just got to wait. So it's not always done on your schedule. Hospitals and healthcare also have numerous diverse applications. More and more robotics are used in hospitals. A friend of mine was telling me that he was in a hospital recently. He had to go in for some treatment. And uh, he ordered something from the kitchen. And this robot turned up and gave it to him. Uh, he was quite impressed. It, being a, a geeky type like myself, he thought it was awesome. You may also find that a doctor may come in as a video conference on a robot. You may also find that we have RFID tags tagging blood fusion pumps, wheelchairs, and so on and so forth. You may also find that portable x-ray devices may also, and workstations on wheels, may also be wheeled around whilst connecting wirelessly. You may also have voice over wireless LAN. As I mentioned, workstations on wheels, x-ray devices. They may also require location services, and they may have multiple wireless LAN equipment installed. Uh, Cisco APs are fully compliant with the requirements of the hospital. You may need to have safety features. It's always good to interact with the hospital's RF team to make sure that the Wi-Fi systems are behaving as expected in the hospital. There may be, for example, aesthetics and cleaning requirements. Cisco APs are very popular because they tend to be sealed unit. It, there's no place for bacteria to hide. So a simple quick wipe down with an uh, antibacterial cloth, and you're good to go. One thing to be aware of when you're doing a site survey in a hospital, hospitals house sick people. and there are Some people that, A, don't want you bothering in the area. And secondly, people are not always comfortable seeing people in tra trauma and such things. So be sensitive to areas where you may not be wanted or allowed. And also, be prepared to send in the surveyor into areas that they may be uncomfortable with. You may also need an escort in certain areas. Manufacturing, manufacturing and warehousing are very similar. You tend to have lots of metal things that can cause reflections and interference. In manufacturing, the applications are generally transaction oriented. Uh, throughput may be the primary concern. You may get a lot of reflection, so you may have to go and do a site survey in the manufacturing site. Very similar to warehousing. Warehousing tends to have long corridors in between racking space, where manufacturing tends to have lots of machines and equipment operating. And Wi-Fi is still, of course, expected to operate and work. Make sure you understand the environment and the user behavior in these environments. Manufacturing and warehousing tends to have high ceilings. Uh, the machines in manufacturing will be a source of interference or maybe signal blocking. You may have lots of moving objects, for example, forklifts. You may be limited how and where you can mount the APs. The layout may change in certain areas of manufacturing or warehouses. And anywhere where you have electric motors, they can generate significant interference across the entire frequency range. Warehousing is very similar to manufacturing, but you tend to have large corridors, iron canyons, down which forklifts may be traveling. You may have large coverage areas, multiple users, tra again, transaction oriented. You may have highly mobile users carrying various wireless devices. A recent warehouse project I worked on had Cisco phones, iPods operating as picking equipment with proprietary scanners and applications, and Microsoft Surface tablets. All the different applications were used by different types of staff 
throughout the day. You need to talk with the warehouse staff about inventory levels. You tend to have to try and do a more generic install for a while. At, excuse me. You have to tend to do a more generic install for a warehouse because inventory may change, and what may be great coverage one day may have reduced coverage the next day because of inventory that's been put in between the access point and where you're standing. Consult multiple individuals. Excuse me. Consult multiple individuals, more than one, and the management. It's always good to have a quick chat with the old guy, we'll call him the old guy, who's been there for 15 years and know exactly what goes on. They can be invaluable, whether a guy or a gal that's been there for quite a while and they really know how things operate in the warehouse. It may be different to what the management thinks operates on the night shift. There may be radically different opinions about what management think goes on at the night shift and what really goes on. People may take shortcuts, for example, on the night shift that could cause problems with the Wi-Fi coverage. Uh, you may also be in a warehouse that has exposure to cold, freezers, for example, or even heating. I had a customer who wanted Wi-Fi coverage at a steel plant, which is a totally different experience to what we're used to. You may have to have weatherproof enclosures or shelving. Remember that the AP doesn't need to be in the cold. It's only the antenna that needs to be where you want the coverage. So you may be able to put the AP outside the cold freezer and just run an antenna inside, which is much simpler than having to put in NEMA boxes with weatherproof enclosures with heating inside the freezer to stop the AP freezing up. Be aware of shelving, antenna mounting, and of course the forklift pads. New warehouse, be very careful. You may be asked by the customer, hey, can you go and do a site survey in the warehouse? You arrive at the warehouse, there's nothing there. The problem with this is, is as soon as the shelving and the racking goes in, and as soon as the inventory goes on the shelving, your site survey will change. So it's best to survey install after the racking and the shelving is installed, ideally after the inventory is stalled as well. Uh, be aware that the customer may say, no, 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 I want you to do it as is. You can just do a best guess, but you may very likely need to make adjustments after inventory is put on the racking and the racking is installed. In fact, you may need to do a complete new site survey, discuss this with the customer and explain to them that you can only, you can only do a calculation based on the information that's available. When you add new racking, when you add new shelving, when you change the inventory, the environment changes, therefore the model needs to change. This can be very difficult to get the customer to understand this. Thank you for watching.